I say, he'll have no control because there's so little resistance. They do expect he may roll. I mean, I bet he did last time. Seven or eight times, actually. Gentle roll over. And that's not risky, not dangerous. What one hopes against is a shoot that if he were to tumble too fast, too many G-forces, automatic would automatically deploy. So that's another thing to watch for as long as you don't see that emergency chute come out in the first minutes of this jump. That's a very good sign. So the good signs would be no wild looking tumble or spin and no drogue chute suddenly coming out. So then, because that air is so thin, that's the point at which they expect that he will break through the sound barrier. Maybe 30 seconds after he drops off, he will gradually, at the, as, as again in, in the beginning, he has no control at all, but toward, toward the 30 second drop, now, he begins uh, to get a little bit of control, and he'll try to put his head down. Release the seatbelt. Attaboy. That's good. Okay. Slide forward into the rest position. Go a little bit further forward so we can check your shoe. It's okay, Felix. I say again, item 31, your shoot integrity is checked. Your parachutes are not deployed. Item 32, verify cutaway knife handle strap is attached and knife in proper position. Say Roger if it's so. Roger. Okay, chest pack face plate heat is on. Make certain that's is on and you got a red light. supply hoses. Okay, are they disconnected? Give me a thumbs up if they're disconnected. I don't, they're still connected. Felix, disconnect the oxygen hose. Atta boy. Alright, stand up on the exterior step. Keep your head down. Release the helmet tie-down strap. Thank <laughs> you. 
with me here. What about that? I mean, I was feeling a bit dizzy looking down, but how's, uh, how's it going so far now? Uh, Felix has now just gone supersonic. This is the moment that Felix has broken the sound barrier. He'll, uh, he'll stay supersonic for about 20 seconds, and then he'll start beginning to feel the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, no one knows what effect this will have on him, so it'll be all ears at mission control. You can see looks of concern and anxiety. He, he appears to be spinning a little bit in that last picture, which obviously is a sign of... He is spinning. That, that is a worry to hence the anxious faces. Look to see if the drogue parachute uh, comes out. And Felix is spinning. Ah, oh, now he's stabilising so, uh, a bit there, which is... That's right. Fantastic. If Felix did spin out of control, uh, to an extent that it was a danger, the drogue parachute would come out and uh, set him straight. By now he should start slowing down. And now he's back in familiar territory. So you think he'll have reached around about 690 miles an hour, Mach 1, breaking the speed of... Now that, that's a critical moment. Felix is back in familiar territory. There are his friends, family, his mum and dad are there, his girlfriends are there. They obviously feel that Felix is past the worst. Now, the only thing to wait for is that no one has fallen faster than Felix has fallen. Uh, will his shoot work? That's the moment that we've been waiting for. We won't know that for another three minutes. The, the free fall time is estimated to be five and a half minutes. Let's see what Joe is saying. So two minutes. Uh, keep talking, Felix. Keep talking. Can't quite make that out. Are you sure he to hear his voice, and you can see how he's in control there. That's showing you the supply of oxygen in his oxygen bottles. Yes, Felix, I hear you. Go ahead. Roger, go ahead. Stable. There are some concerned expressions on his face, uh, on, on the faces of people at mission control. Um, what we're waiting for is the shoot to deploy. I think Joe is telling him, not far to go, Felix, not far to go. They couldn't deploy it for him, could they? No, there's an automatic reserve shoot which will deploy if uh, Felix doesn't deploy the shoot himself. But just look at that clock. We're waiting to see what happens at 5 minutes and 30 seconds. After that, we all hope it will be plain sailing, but uh, anxious moments until that happens. There's the oh. chute. There's the chute. So the chute is open now. So it's only earlier than I expected. I wonder if that's because Felix was feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Right. But only only 20 seconds earlier than, than you were saying. So in that sense, he's, he's pretty much according to, to the scheme of things. And we heard the cheers of mission control. Yeah. Um, obviously, parachuting isn't entirely safe, but considering what he's done, he's overcome 
the major obstacles it looks like Felix van Gartner is set to, to break four world records the highest balloonist the longest free fall the furthest free fall and these records have to be checked he, we expect that he's broken the sound barrier extraordinary let's just see if they come back in communication again now there's there's the winners out of the north at five to ten out of the north at five to ten and you can contact mike todd safely on this frequency give mike todd a call The winds out of the north, five to ten. Give my call. Tears of joy for mission control. His mother was in tears a few moments ago. It would be tears of joy in another couple of minutes, I hope. Can you imagine <laughs> what she's feeling? Obviously, she looks <laughs> relieved, but mm. I'm sure she's extremely proud. Mm. So, so we're, we're now at 6,000 feet. So 6,000 feet is uh, really well, well on the way to completing this. He's stuff. nearly home. You yeah. can see from the look on his, on his face that uh, the worst he'll get, fingers crossed, is a twisted ankle at this stage. But uh, Ava ha was very anxious about this. She's had a son that was a base jumper, has been doing this all his life. But this was different. You know, so many things could have gone wrong. But now, having lived through this for a few years, you can... You, you saw the relief oh, out of things. Tangible relief. And these pictures now, of course, on, on great quality, and it's, <laughs> it just looks serene sailing, doesn't it? This is the moment the beach is put for. Let's listen to the conversation. to Felix. They've been on this journey for more than five years and uh, th th they're actually quite different people. Um, Joe Kittinger was a test pilot, uh, a military man. Felix Baumgartner was a young base jumper. Quite different characters, but uh, they've got one thing in common, being prepared to take this kind of risk. Look at Felix there, just sailing through the air. Let's, let's uh, listen into that because I think the audio quality will be improving every uh, every foot that he's dropping. Just 5,000 feet now, so really nearing the altitude out there. I'm not sure of the altitude of the ground. Hey, welcome to Clerk. So Felix is steering himself to the designated landing site. This area was chosen because. Uh, of uh, the, the lack of buildings, the open space. Helicopters are, are on their way to that site. Uh, they'll check him out, pick him up, and then bring him back to mission control for what would presumably be a, a hero's welcome. Hey, Felix, the wind is coming from the ridge. The wind is coming from the ridge. Oh, towards the ridge, Sorry. The wind is coming towards the ridge. The Red Bull status program. So the steering, coming from the direction of that ridge I was talking about. See what the helicopter's there, yes. So he certainly got the highest jump mark that he was after. As he's we'll going down the last the few hundred feet, is this one of the most, one of the most extraordinary things I've seen? Is, is it one of the most extraordinary achievements, personal endeavor achievements you've seen? I, I certainly have. And then when I touched down, look at those scenes.
there fast. He has the world's record now for the highest jump by far. And obviously conscious, standing, talking, and uh, I mean, he just looks remarkable, Al, considering what he's done. He does, he does. He doesn't seem to have made the longest jump, which is, uh, he pulled his